Happy Sunday, everybody. And this is an incredible happy Sunday because this weekend is my birthday. As of Friday, this last week, it was my birthday. So I'm all sparkly today for Melissa uh, for our showcase Sunday to bring some amazing top tips. And I'm honoured and absolutely overjoyed to have Melissa Robson of the Valuable People in Service Limited. And Melissa's going to introduce herself. So Melissa, who are you? What do you do? And why do you do it? Oh, thank you so much, Alison. And happy birthday. Thank it's so, so such an honour to be here on your birthday weekend. Oh, I feel all special. Should have wore a party hat. <laughs> Um, I'm Melissa Robson. Um, I'm from Valuable People in Service Limited. Um, I am passionate about customer service. I'm passionate about customers. I'm passionate about the service we give customers. I love customer excellence. Excellent. I, think I think for a long time I was thinking that I needed to be a lot of different things and a lot of you know processes and this. And when my passion is a good customer experience and how we can give that. Um, and also, I really enjoy valuable valuing the people that give that service. You know, your people in your um, call centres, your people in your service industry, they're, they're the backbone of what we're doing. And they have that face to face with your customers. So valuing them is really what I enjoy. Sounds really weird, but I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. And and there's, it's interesting because this is something that we need to address daily because without our customers, without our clients, without our guests in, in our hospitality sector, but also in business in general, I call it our ideal client avatar, you know, without our people, we would not be in business because they're the ones who purchase from us. And there's lots of different ways and and you know, systems out there to keep us in touch with our customers, but do we use them effectively? And and I think, you know, we see lots on the internet. We see lots of people who are trying to drive it. So what makes you unique and different? What is your unique selling point? What makes you unique and different to opposed to your competition? I think for me, it's, you're right. There is a lot out there. There's a lot about the systems and the processes. I think for me, I focus on the people performing those processes and those systems is it effective so just because the internet says we need to have all these check boxes are you then drawing your people in service away from serving be giving an exceptional service because they have to follow a procedure that is so maybe outdated or doesn't fit your own personal model you know it could be that you're using a, a procedure that is for a massive hotel, huge, enormous. So you've got your, you know, your, you know, two people working a day that are focusing on doing all of this administration when really they need to be um, getting to know the customer, understanding them, offering that special service. So me um, and my unique point is that I look at those people. I look at the people that are performing these operations daily and how we can better utilise those um people's skills to enhance um your businesses yeah and that's so important because our people in our personnel in our organizations are sometimes forgotten about and it's understanding you know what they're doing currently and trying to hit deadlines also trying to make sure that they've managed it but you help them with the processes you help them to actually gain intel on our customers then it makes our jobs a lot easier and how amazing is that yeah <laughs> i think you're right you know it is you know having mm. a lot of pre-built information like you say in the processes that we can build the systems that we can use and um, you can have a lot of information already in there so i think i gave an example and it's the one i give always if you have a regular a customer that comes to your restaurant or visits and stays and they're very particular. I think we all, you know, is a nice way of putting what, you know, we've all experienced a particular customer and they only like to work with, you know, um, David or Sandra, um, but they're on holiday or you would be able to know when, you know, 
say Mr. or Mrs. Jones calls in, it would pop up on the screen the times they'd stayed, particular comments that, you know, th this is a, you know, we wouldn't write it as that, but we would only like to work with David and Sandra. So you would be able to preempt their experience. Um, equally in a restaurant setting, if you know that they always come in, they always sit in the same table, you can reserve that table without them needing to say, I'd like to reserve my table. You would know when they place their booking, they're booking in today, let's reserve that space. So it's almost anticipating the needs of the customer, utilizing a system, a CRM system. So it's, you know, it's available to you. It's just knowing how to harness that. And I think utilizing the people that are working in the hotel, in the restaurant, in, you know, in any part of the hospitality industry, their knowledge. So, you know, it might be that Sandra or, or David are the people that know that Mr. Jones only likes his wine after his dessert or this, but that goes home with them. That's not written down anywhere. So if you get a new employee into the team or they leave unexpectedly or, or you know, I like to say win a cruise. I don't like to say they go off on it and, you know, on sickness or anything. They're on a cruise and they're, you know, you know, often enjoying themselves. Anybody else within that team at any time would be able to see that information, know their favourites, know the experience that they'd previously had. And it's all there available to you to view just from them picking up the phone and booking a table or arriving and you taking their details, all that would be there for you to see. So I really enjoy getting the knowledge from the people and having it available to the wider team. So that's, why that's amazing. And it's so important. Guest recognition is the ultimate, you know, and uh, and that's what gets the red stars, the, the accolades. It, it really does. It gets a... Trip advisors on number one. You know, everyone wants to feel want like a, everyone wants to feel like a VIP, and it doesn't take a lot for us to make people feel that way. You know, yeah. if you've got the right structure in place, you know, imagine you've called a restaurant and they're like, "Oh, hi, Alison, it's lovely to hear from you again. Yeah. We'll have your table ready." And then someone comes over and goes, "Oh, this was the wine you had last time. Did you enjoy?" You know, you'd be like, "Oh my goodness me! Like, I, am yeah. I?" And that's, you know, very simply, we could just add that into, you know, a very well-structured CRM system. Now, CRM systems vary. You know, you could have a very, you know, low-level one that's not, you know, massive. Um, and you can have the big higher-end ones that are, you know, massive corporate ones. Um, it's utilising and understanding what your requirements are for your business and then getting that built in to understand so um there's a lot out there there's a lot free you know apps that you can get for a certain percentage um of customers and then there's some you know massive um ones there as well that can really help so and you help to make the most out of those systems because we've all you know there's a lot of people who's got crm systems already um but not making the most of it i am holding my hand up i'm one of those people you know where i have got great data i've got great data collection i'm very well connected but do i use my crm system properly no and and i'm well aware of that so it is interesting that you pick up on that and you're able to help and support business owners managers teams to to use them effectively so like you said Mr. and Mrs. Jones has an outstanding day with you or an outstanding experience because they are recognised. Recognition is really key for customer service. It is so important. And actually knowing any dietary requirements or anything like that in advance, instead of turning up and say, have you been with us before? Yeah. That's always a, a bit of a... What you, you don't not feel like a... Times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been, I, I come weekly I come once a month yeah. you know I'll walk into so I go to um for dinner like just at a local place and me and my colleague have been going once a month since you know her daughter's three in March and we've been going since she was we got got pregnant and I sometimes we don't go you know just for a section you know like maybe a couple of months off and each time I go they're like oh it's lovely to see you again your cheese pie because I always get the cheese pie yeah. They always know, I go, oh, I'll just look at the menu first. And I always pick the same thing. And they know that. And they see me once a month. And they must see 
hundreds of people, but all I do is recommend that location. Mm. Anyone comes to, you know, visit in my, um, you know, like my family, my friends, people at my job, you know, the people that are in, that I meet, I'm like, you want to go to the Midway? And I'll, you know, I'll do it at Midway in Stockport. Um, that's, you know, that's such a great place. And the staff make you feel like you are a friend, a co- you know, someone yeah. that they know. And it's not always that they need to be friendly, but sometimes it's feeling like, oh, they everyone wants to be remembered yeah and if you can you know have a system in place that does that I think I'm just very recognizable and I always you know want the cheese pie so (laughs) but if you can you know you're a larger corporation and you have that or even if you're a smaller one but you just get a lot of um, people coming through it's easy to be able to recognize and it's and it's giving that alert as well if somebody's not been in touch for a while and the the other Mm -hmm. thing as well is you know it is one of our human needs. We've got six human needs and significance. We need to feel significance, not that it might be a, ma- a major in our human need, but we all need to feel some significance in somebody's lives. So it's really important. So um, as always, I always ask my amazing interviewees on our Showcase Sunday of what are your five top tips to help and support people whilst they're waiting to work with you, Melissa? Oh, lovely. Well, thank you. Um, and obviously it's a special birthday one. Um, so my one of my first tips is look at your data. Look at it. Is Are you using it well? You know, do you have the info? Are you gathering the information you want to gather? If all you're taking is a name and an email address, but you want to know, what they you know how many did they eat in the restaurant did they stay one night or two nights have they stayed frequently you know what's your data giving you um another thing would be to look back look retrospective so you know it's about customer retention is you know a big think everyone's focusing on I need new need new need new but you've already got I'm pretty sure everybody's got you know the past 12 months people that have come and stayed, people that have come and dined, people that have, you know, been to your restaurant, been visited, you can utilise their um, statistics, shall we say, to in order to preempt. So if they came, you know, in April, then in February, March time, send them an email with a 5% off or a just, you know, maybe not even a discount, but it was so lovely to see you this time last year. Why don't you come along, you know, and if you've got a good system set up, then that can be automated. You know, you won't need somebody to go into that. You can reset already when they stay 11 months time. And then there's the email gone. You know, there's a lot of things that can be done where you're not just going through your calendar and cross checking it in that way. Um, Another thing would be to listen to your, your people um you know listen to the people that are working throughout the day and I don't just mean managers um you know it's it's a bit difficult sometimes when you say this but I don't just mean managers and I don't just mean with managers in presence um you know sometimes even an anonymous survey doesn't feel anonymous um when you're in a small group of four people, that is not an anonymous survey. But I think giving an open and um, an open space for people to give feedback and listening to that feedback and showing and incorporating them into not decision making, but showing that they're valued in what they're doing. Because you're when you're not there, they're the face of your business. They're the people that they're meeting. Um, I think that was number. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, I think. Um, and I guess just, um, I guess, you know, think about what processes you have in place currently. So I know we're looking at the data. I think, think about what your goal would be. What do you want? If you're looking for scalability and you're looking to grow, are your processes that you've got at the moment functional? If you are using, you know, a manual system or you're using manual things or you've just got one person doing that and your expectation is that next year you'll have three, you know, three businesses or three hotels, three restaurants or even just to double in size, is that scalable to what you want? Um, 
would that person or that system be able to handle that much? Like everyone wants to grow and be successful and do more. How can we make sure that everything is in place before that happens as we're running into that? So um, those would be my, my top, top tips there. That's amazing. And it is so important, isn't it? You know, the, the other thing that I guess we've forgotten to mention that it doesn't matter what systems they've got in place. You come in and actually connect everything together, including the people, don't you? You're yeah. the one who makes it happen no matter what system it is. So if it's a PMS, which is a property management system or um, what, whatever system they've got in place, you actually help the 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 business and the people to bring it together and connect yeah. with the people you know yeah, the ideal clients the the customers the the guests yeah i think i use the word crm a bit loosely there you know i think it is any system that you have in place it's all about the data and your end result and then the people that you're working with and how mm -hmm. we can incorporate it. It's almost like bundling that together for the outcome that you want, but also making sure that you are looking at your scalability. You know, do you want to grow? Are you able to do, do that based on this bundle that we currently have? How yeah. can we make it so that, you know, in a year's time, two years time, you've got that massive growth that we all hope for. You're able to, to do that. Let's get in at the ground or it might be that you have grown, you know, what an absolutely amazing thing. You've now grown so much and you've got all this data, but you're, you know, it's, it's grown out of control. So now it just needs to bring something back and put some of those processes in place to, to help that. And how amazing would it be, you know, to have where, where you've got capacity to take more occupancy, revenue, how amazing would it be to have a steady stream of clients coming in every single day, no matter what, because mm. it, it's doing it for you and you know what they're wanting and you know who's going to walk through the door and what they look like as well. You know, that would be incredible yeah. with AI and everything and, and your help and support to connect it all together. That is unbelievable. It's just really, uh, yeah. really beneficial now, isn't it? Yeah, I think it really is. I think, you know, as a as a society, we're moving for more into, I don't, you know, people don't want to have to ask as well. No. You know, no. no one wants to ask. I mean, even just going to your GP surgery, you, you no longer speak to your receptionist. You go no. in, you tap a button and that it already knows what you want. You know, there's a lot of non-interaction, you know, non-personal interaction. So being able to offer that in a, you know, a hotel setting or in a, a restaurant setting is something maybe to, you know, that the future holds. So being able to build those systems and that sort of bundle in the background now, as we move forward to say AI and things like that is, is definitely where it's at. Yeah, because that, the one thing that, and, and I say this a lot, I do say it a lot in any business and any organisation the you know hospitality customer service in a people interaction is going to have incredible scale because the the way the way society culture and uh, the world is going that there's going to be less and less in our daily lives so we'll be looking to get that connection because that's another human need you know love and connection that we'd want that connection so hospitality is in a cracking position mm -hmm. to be able to deliver that so that's going to be a much needed luxury uh in a not very distant you know not not uh distant future so it's incredible so obviously you've mentioned lots of different examples that you've helped and supported people in the industry and and you know save time and so on but is there any other examples you want to give at all melissa um, I suppose, oh, your yeah, value, I guess, and um, which you mentioned. Yeah, I think it's just you know looking at um helping within your customer care teams as well. So although I, and when I say customer care teams, that's not just a, a call centre. As anybody working with a customer, so I've got fifteen years of uh, management in customer service. I, you know, have managed large teams. I've, you know, for a short time managed over North Europe. So getting those teams to feel valued and to be working in a way that is positive for your company. So, it, I, you know, training is also available to those teams. 
um, you know, looking at maybe, a, a, you know, structuring that in a way that is beneficial for your company. Now, I do that, you know, uh, within, you know, I've done that within a corporate world. I've managed, you know, a very successful team for, you know, the, the past eight years. And it's, you know, been a really good way to grow everyone within the team and that's what I like to see somebody that comes in you train them you nurture and you see them grow and flourish and I think that when they feel when they that's horrible but when people within service which is what I mean but when anybody when they when I when I feel valued within my role I do more I feel like I'm part of the company I feel like this is my company I'm representing and I go above and beyond and I I am the face of that company so I do offer you know training and um I can look at the you know your current setup and if there is um sort of particular needs for certain people then um customer service sort of training um is available as well Brilliant. And it is important, isn't it? It saves lots of time, money, energy, and, and the amount of re staff retention at the moment in, in the field of customer service is at an all-time low, yeah. uh, especially I mean, since the pandemic. In, um, you know, I think it was the Institute of Customer Service said that, that um, I think it was £6.9 billion pounds was lost in all sectors over the past year um, due to poor problem resolution. So I've had a problem in your business and nobody has been able to resolve it. So they've not returned. And I think, you know, if you look at statistics about good customer service, mm -hmm. how many people do you actually tell? You're like, oh, I had a great time. I had a great time. But if you have a terrible time somewhere, <laughs> you know, the, the ratio goes up. You know, you'll tell the woman in Tesco, you'll tell anybody. So I think it's, you know, focusing on that part as well of having the the right people properly trained. Um, mm. Because I think a lot of the times we can hire somebody expecting that they understand your system. So it's yeah. having that training in there and being able to allow that person to really flourish within your company um, is just a, a complete benefit for you because mm. they will essentially run your company while you're not there and you know be the face of your company um so it's I really do I think that a lot of putting the value on the people that are having that day-to-day -day contact um can only um improve your your businesses absolutely absolutely without a shadow of a doubt so if someone right now was sitting on the fence and thinking right that sounds great you know what what would they, I mean, why would they be doing that anyway? I think it's a no brainer to have, even if it's just like a health check, come and see what, you know, your systems are in place, et cetera, and, and what more you can do. And then you can package up for, for them what they need. Um, but what would you past clients say and, and, you know, about what you do? Yeah, I think, you know, some of the clients that I've worked with have really enjoyed, um, streamlining the systems that they're using um cleaning up the data that they already have and utilizing that um being able to you know like mail out to the the right people you know if you've had people stay in and all your data just says stayed and you want to know who stayed in the spring you know you want to be able to target that audience um, directly um other things is working with the the you know the customer care teams ensuring that they are you know having that training they understand basic customer interactions you know hello thank you so much you know smiling you know even when you're on the phone you want to answer the phone with a smile so I think that a lot of the people that I've already worked with have said that's you know the benefits that they can see there I um have implemented a couple of systems and um you know it was like oh why did we never have this before you know <laughs> we've been you know we've been waiting here you know writing it down on a notepad and you know you know Sandra's gone off on holiday and everyone's like oh Sandra's not here we can't deal with this client and now well it's fine because like, we can see all the communication that we've all had together so I think it's the I think it's the non-thinking part is where it's added the value the most. When you're constantly thinking about anticipating, so you're not sure, you don't know. Whereas I can add in there, 
knowing already, preempting that experience, that expectation. Wow. Absolutely. I was just I was just thinking as well when you were speaking, because, you know, say if you are full to capacity and you think, oh, this is not for me, but yet you get a cancellation and you don't know who stayed in that lodge, that cottage, that a room or apartment, whatever it may be, you could look back on your previous guests who's not stayed for the last couple of months and, and give them a ring and say I've got, it's just become available if you're interested you know yeah. so many options to keep consistently 100 percent full and mm -hmm. and then you know manage it so that you're the operator not uh, the owner not the operator it really exactly and also on that Alison I think if you've had somebody call and say hey I'd like to come and stay yeah. on Wednesday you know or on your birthday and you, yeah. you know, and you're like, oh, I'm really sorry. Sorry, Alison, we're fully booked. What do you do with that information? You know, do you keep that and then say next month, next year, this lady called for her birthday. Let's email her two months before and go, hey, you wanted to come and stay last year. We were fully booked. Here's a voucher. Come and stay with us. Yeah. You know, are we, are you utilizing your systems enough to to do that they're all possibilities um and also if someone calls and you're booked and then you get a cancellation you can call them back as well so yeah. there's all things in there that you, that are available brilliant that's been amazing so how do people get in touch with you melissa is it a phone number an email address <laughs> what what i mean obviously we'll put all melissa's details at the end of our showcase sunday uh, that you can connect to but what is the best way to get in touch with you um, so, yeah, I have a um, an email address, obviously. It's a valuable people in service at gmail.com. Um, and you can call me by phone um, and, you know, if I'm, you know, leave a voicemail and I'll call you back. And um, we are launching our newly revised Instagram account um, next week. So, you know, get in there, you know, if you send me a email I can add you into there as well and um, like and follow you know that's um but yeah so just by email and send me any information that you need we are um looking for some case studies at the moment so it's very exciting to to get on board while you can you know we've got a, a few limited spaces left in the in the case study um period so um do just send me a send me an email and I'll send you more details about that because I'm the first to hear that, may I put my name down first? Ah, yes, of course, oh, Alison. No fantastic. problem. So Jump be aware, everybody, I'll be keeping in touch with you a lot more and a lot better <laughs> than I have done in the past. So. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Oh, oh, well, thank you so much, Melissa. That's been incredible. And it is something that I am incredibly passionate about customer service and making sure it's spot on. Uh, a lot of people already know I've got a virtual reality training element that's going to be beta testing very soon, Immersive XP, um, that will help and support people in the actual job. So this goes hand in hand without a shadow of a doubt to be able to actually give you the tools and techniques to be able to document it all and have it to hand. It's your memory bank and storage. Uh, which Melissa's bringing to the table. So please get in touch if she's offering a case study. You yeah. know, there's <laughs> one less place available now. Yeah. <laughs> one. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's incredible. So certainly get in touch with Melissa direct. Uh, all the details are at the end of our showcase Sunday. So may I wish you all, and thank you so much, Melissa, for You're joining welcome. me. Thank Lovely. You. And happy birthday again, Alison. Thank you. Enjoy everybody's singing happy birthday now to you. Um, to enjoy your day. <laughs> I'm celebrating it all weekend. <laughs> but uh, may I wish you uh, an amazing Sunday. All the very best. And thank you for joining me on Showcase Sunday. And please get in touch. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.